Good morning everybody, my name is Shelby and welcome to my channel. It is harvest time. I've got my harvest baskets, I have my harvest tray, and I'm eyeing all of the delicious looking beef steaks that are starting to ripen, some butternut squash. Tomorrow I will be canning for the first time. I'm definitely really excited about that. It's gotta happen. We have so many tomatoes that are ready to go and I don't want them to be wasted. So if you're interested in uh, staying tuned, seeing what it's like to watch a first time canner definitely stay around let's start with the spoon tomatoes who gets the award for the sloppy messy gardener this year that's me uh, this plant is literally like all over the place it's basically like a, a ground tomato plant at this point I never trellis it up but I'm gonna get to it This is not good at all. Oh my gosh, I just walked into my garden. As you guys might know if you've watched my, my last video, a pest has been eating my cantaloupe, or one cantaloupe, and I was like, you know what, it's just one, whatever. And I just walked in here and there is a watermelon that has a big chunk of watermelon taken out of it. Oh my gosh. My beautiful Dixie Queen watermelon. Now there's another cantaloupe that has been, uh, had a bite taken out of it. Of course I can't eat either one of these things now. Still good chicken food, but now I'm at like an all out war with whatever critter is eating our stuff. What I need to do is get all of this butternut squash uh, harvested and all of like my cantaloupe harvested, all of my watermelon harvested because, well not the watermelon because it's it's not anywhere near ready, like the watermelon that's left. But the butternut squash, you know, we're gonna see what is ready because I'd rather have something that's like slightly unripe than lose it to a critter. And I'm pretty sure that they're ready to go anyways, all the butternut squash. Okay, so this is a little more than I expected. I'm gonna go grab my wheelbarrow because I cannot lift all of this by myself. I'm over here next to my San Marzano tomatoes, which is a paste tomato. So if you're not familiar with different varieties of tomatoes or like making tomato sauce, which I'm barely familiar with making tomato sauce, I do know that ideally you would want a paste tomato. They are a little bit more fibrous as opposed to just kind of being like watery, um, like a cherry tomato. But like a cherry tomato is going to have a lot of really sweet flavor. So each variety is going to have a different pro and con for a different type of a use uh, but you're going to want some paste tomatoes if you're going to be making tomato sauce of course you can make tomato sauce with any tomatoes as well uh, but that's what i'm going to be growing a lot of and hopefully making a lot of sauce of All right, let's make our way to the front.
it's raining right now and as long as it's not lightning and thundering because I have like a big phobia of lightning I'm gonna be out here harvesting we've got our brandy wine our brandy wine tomatoes ah oh, yay they're looking beautiful All right, it's thundering and lightning. I gotta get inside and I will finish this up later because like I said, I'm terrified of, I'm terrified of thunder and lightning. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I will finish this up once it stops raining. I am going to harvest my, these are the strawberry like cherry tomatoes I forgot the exact name of them I had a few of them they're actually really sweet and they taste good for some reason I thought they weren't gonna taste good because of like gardening blogs or vlogs or whatever but they actually taste really good and they're so so pretty I'm glad I came out here when I did. Ideally, I would have done this yesterday, but there have been crazy storms like every single night. So by the time my husband got home from work to watch the kids and everything, uh, it was like lightning and uh, storming really bad. So if your tomatoes look like they're about to ripen, they're really big and sizable, there's lots of heavy storms coming up and they're just barely starting to blush, just pick them because they're going to risk uh, splitting with the heavy rains and that's what's happening with a lot of my beefsteak tomatoes that I'm finding right now. Uh, they're starting to split just because of like the huge influx of water. So we're on to the Black Beauty tomatoes which are actually kind of uh, red with like a black top, like a black hat which is really cool. Really similar to the like strawberry ones that I just showed you, like those little cherry kind of strawberry ones. Um, I've never tried them, so I can't wait to see what they taste like. And just so you guys know, this isn't even like our first tomato big harvest. We have been harvesting like like seriously bowls and bowls and bowls of tomatoes lately it's so awesome i feel so just fortunate to have such success this year with tomatoes and just like in general like our harvest uh, so far that one's not good so far i've made um tomato soup which was super super easy i made um i've just been throwing them in everything like salads sandwiches meals everything and we have not been letting them go to waste but um, that's why we're actually canning tomorrow because now it's like there's just such an abundance and i want i want some like canned tomato sauce you know who doesn't want that oh my goodness this plant is like out of control this is absolutely crazy right now what we got going on i'm trying to i'm trying to clip off like clusters uh, because that's how this one actually grows and uh, i'm so bad i've let a lot of them split unfortunately i should have came out before all the rains and storms but you know you learn you live and you learn so now i know before the next storm i'm definitely this cluster is okay this cluster is okay uh, so now i know before the next storm i'm going to definitely get my butt out here or we're going to have a bunch of uh split tomatoes which you know once they split like of course it doesn't mean that they're like not edible at that point it's just um more opportunities for like bugs and pests and things like that to get inside so you want to try to avoid that at all costs and when you have like 50 tomato plants you know it's going to start happening basically if you don't stay on top of it all right we're going to make our way over to the pineapple tomato plant because there's one that is ripe and it looks so beautiful Could this tomato be more stunning and fun looking? It looks like it's like tie-dye, super, super cool. Oh, I'm so excited to try this. 
and there's more to harvest. Next, I need to harvest these tomatillos, which, holy cow, there's a whole lot of these bad boys. Basically, once they start kind of like splitting out like the cover part of a tomatillo, that's when they're ready to harvest. All right, you guys, Whew, that was good. We have so many vegetables to work with now. I've got tons of butternut squash, tomatoes, cantaloupes, uh, tomatillos, all right here looking beautiful, organic, all of that stuff. So if you're interested in seeing me can my tomatoes, definitely stick around. This is definitely not a how-to portion of the video. It's just me showing what we did for our first time canning. I canned 12 pounds of salsa in all with the help of my mom who has some experience canning. We went through the painstaking task of removing all of the seeds by hand because we were making salsa and we wanted everything to stay chunky so we didn't use my seed extractor machine. In all, we made 24 pint-sized and two quart-sized uh, salsas and we used a blender to make everything like a uniform kind of chunky texture. If you're interested, this is the recipe that we used and we followed it to a T as recommended. And this is the pressure cooker that I own and this is the pressure cooker my mom owns. I'm a little bit jealous, it's really nice. We got the temperature up so that we wouldn't crack the jars. Once the temperature was nice and warm, we filled up the 25 little pint-sized jars and we water bathed in my pressure canner and we actually pressure canned in my mom so that we could try both methods. After canning for the first time, I'm left feeling like this is suspiciously easy. So I am definitely hooked. I can't wait to make some marinara sauce, pizza sauce. This is just the beginning of a lifelong addiction to canning. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a like. Until next time, bye.